as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. Welcome to this service. Uh, we are here together again uh, to share the, from the Word of God, uh, to encourage ourselves in the season of uh, coronavirus. But our focus is God. Uh, and for this season, we want to focus on the issue of the Holy Spirit, obedience, intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And th this morning, I'll uh, be speaking, uh, speaking about uh, wrong focus and God's intervention. Uh, so let's pray as we start. Father, we want to thank you this morning. We thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to come into your presence. And we pray that you be with us as we share from your word. We ask that, Lord Jesus, you shall be glorified in our being, in your presence. We shall gr see great things happening. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I want us to share from the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 1, we are reading from verse 1. The book of Jonah, Jonah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 1. <clears throat> now the word, of, the, word came, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tashish, from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tashish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tashish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and 
there was a mighty tempest on the sea. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest part of the ship and lain down and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. And they say to one another, Come, let us cast, cast lots that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more temp temptu temptu temptuous. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to, to return to land, but they could not. For the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man, man's life, and do not charge us with innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Praise the Lord. It's a long passage, but it's important for us so that we can be able to uh, concentrate and focus. We are talking about wrong focus wrong focus. And here we are dealing with the people that are called uh, by the Lord and uh, they are given specific missions, specific something specific to do and then they decide to do what they want to do. In this particular case, I believe uh, Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh, Nineveh for his own reasons, but God called him to go to Nineveh because there were issues and God wanted to proclaim, to, the, to tell the people what he's about to do. And I believe God has spoken to our nation, Kenya, for many years. He has spoken over and over. He has said what he needed to say. One time, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, uh, the time for prophecies uh, is coming to the end because there is nothing else I need to say. I've said everything that I needed to say. And it's very, very interesting that from that time, I've not heard many prophecies, except recently uh, that we have started uh, hearing prophecies, uh, people are bringing forth prophecies. Sometimes they are local people, our own ministers. Sometimes they come from overseas. They are talking about this nation. I'm talking about Kenya. But I'm talking about God speaking. And many times the Lord has spoken to me diverse things, and that is for another time. So Jonah heard the word of God. Go to Nineveh and proclaim the disaster. God hardly does anything without letting the prophets know. That's the word of God. But Jonah decided, I'm tired of the presence of the Lord. What I will do, I'll go away from the presence of the Lord. He became carnal. He thought in a carnal way that wherever he imagined God was, is where he was. He did not know that God was with him even on the way to Tashish. And I was checking, I was trying to find out Tashish, Joppa, Nineveh, 
I was looking at the distances and the direction. From Joppa, Nineveh is very north, 800 kilometers. Tashish is west, 4,000 kilometers, and Jonah paid the price, paid the fare. 4,000 kilometers, 2,500 miles west. Instead of going north, he goes west. And far enough, the destination was long enough so that he could be very far from the presence of the Lord. He thought. And so he pays the fare. And disobedience is very expensive. It can be very expensive. So he pays the fare to go to Tashish. He's in the ship. And when he gets into the ship, he goes right down. And there he is. He's asleep. Like nothing is happening. In the meantime, the wind and the waves, the opposition, God has sent the opposition. And so the ship is being tossed everywhere. This side, this side, up and down. And people started throwing their wares, the, the cargo, so that to lighten the ship. So they are losing, they are throwing away goods for the sake of survival. And even in, in this time of coronavirus, there will be many losses, diverse in nature. Very many diverse losses. Maybe someone did not hear the word of the Lord. Don't worry that it is in the world. We want to focus on ourselves. Every country has its own issues. We want our issues. What I have realized that is that when it comes to issues of God, think personal before you talk about we, before we talk about us. Before we talk about the world, let's talk, talk about Kenya. That's how we are going to be able to focus. And when we come to Kenya, let's talk about me. What is my contribution to what is negative? What displeases God in Kenya? What is my contribution? If we do that, then in our, even in our prayers, we shall have a real focus because if we don't qualify to call God, then we are doing a useless job. So we must qualify. But let's go back to Jonah. So Jonah decides, I must go. In the meantime, he has caused a lot of trouble to other people who are innocent. They will had a journey to Tashish, and he joined them, and he knew God was going to pursue him. He knew God was unhappy with him. And so in his sleep, the captain comes. He's concerned about this, 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 this man. What sort of man is this? When all of us are calling our gods, he's sleeping. He's not even calling. So he's challenging him. Who are you? Get up. Call your God. And they want to know, who has caused all this trouble? They suspected him. And he explained, they want to know, where do you come from? What's your name? Where do you come from? You know, that is very important, where you come from. Your background, your shago, whatever you have picked, wherever you are. If you're a Christian, you've been with the Lord, that's where you are coming from. You've been in, in the upper room, in the other service, we, are talking, we were talking about, about Elijah, who was coming from an upper room, and someone was raised from the dead. So that's where he was coming from. So these people want to know this guy. Where are you? Who are you? Who are your people? Eh? What is your occupation? Who are you? Are you a preacher? Or are you a carpenter? Or who are you? They want to know. That is extremely important in life. Identity. Identify yourself. There was a time when there was uh, an issue in the land uh, in 1982. And uh, there was that coup that uh, uh, was, uh, was crushed. But uh, I loved my work, and I decided, uh, me, I'm going to work. And I decided I was not going to drive. 
I was going to walk. And that's why my house is very near town, because it, it is by design, eh? so, th so that I can walk uh, into the city. So when I went, I entered the city, the city was quiet, and whoever was there, they walked with their hands up and your ID <laughs> up. That is the day I carried my ID for, 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 for the longest time up. You are, I'm holding my ID everywhere. By the time I got to the office, I was ready to go back. I, because I was nobody and I was not sure what I was going to do there. So I had to turn back. Then my way back was still the same. You are hands up, but with your ID up. So identity is extremely important. Who are you? Jonah exp uh, explained himself. And the people were reluctant to deal with him because they were sympathizing. He told them, you just throw me into the sea. The sea will become for your sake. But they are reluctant. As they, as they continued being reluctant, the sea became even, even rougher. It became worse. They had to do what they really did not want to do. They took Jonah, threw him into the sea, and then the sea was calm. And here we are saying, the church of Jesus Christ in the city, in the, in the, in the, in the land, it is always my people. My people, the people that are called by my name, are normally the issue. We are the Jonah. The Lord keeps speaking. And our response is, many times they are contrary to what the Lord is saying. And this is where we have to be like Jonah. We may not be able to go to chapter 2 to see what was happening when he was in the, in the belly of the fish. But he changed. In the belly of the fish, he changed. He became a different person. And I want to say that I love testimonies. And I will squeeze one here. I've gone from, I've, I've spoken for a number of messages without any, any form of testimony. When I was zealous for God, and when God started speaking to me, saying many things, I became so zealous for him. And God spoke to me and told me something that I think is relevant to Kenya. Go around Mount Kenya. Pray up Mount Kenya. Deal with those demons in, on Mount Kenya. Just driving around. So, in the meantime, another project has come. I am invited to Dar es Salaam to go to uh, speak in an international meeting. So my feeling was that Mount Kenya, Mount Kenya will never move. It will always be there. So I can always go. I can always go and round Mount Kenya. So, but this conference, it, have a, it has dates. So I decided what I'm going to do, I am going to go to Dar es Salaam, and then I will deal with Mount Kenya later. So I too, uh, we went. We went to a, with a friend of mine. And I think he's in the meeting. <laughs> so we went. So when we got there, I, I say disobedience is very expensive. Eh? So when we got there, we got there at night, about 8 o'clock, it's dark. And the place where the bus stopped is a place with many people, like Machakos here in Kenya, in Nairobi. And it's dark. So, and we did not find the people waiting for us. Later, we knew that they had come the day earlier. And I don't know how, because nobody told them that we were arriving that day. So, but we did not find the people waiting for us. So, we were there not knowing what to do with ourselves. And those days, we did not have mobile phones. So, we got stuck. In the meantime, we lost some of the money that we had. Because it's dark, and there are pickpockets, like we have in such places, and we had a camera, it was stolen. 
So we had very limited uh, resource, financial resource, limited. But we decided to, to go to a hotel that I knew, name, the name of the hotel I knew. So we took a taxi and uh, we were taken to that hotel. And there we were, we were praying. In fact, I was, I was fasting. I fasted for six days, not necessarily because of the meeting. I was not sure why I was fasting, but I was fasting. So we are praying and telling God, God, now what are we supposed to do? We have lost money. We have lost, we lost a camera. We have not connected with these people. Huh? And we are not able to talk to them. So that's when the Lord spoke to me. He asked me, did I send you to Mount Kenya? I said, yes. Did you go? No. So he said, you are rebellious. <laughs> he told me, you are rebellious. You think that you love me. And you think that you are very obedient. But you are rebellious. I am going to cut short this trip so that you can go and obey. And indeed, we had to come back very quickly. And we left those people without spe enough speakers because some of the international speakers did not come. Now to negotiate with them that we are going back was an issue and was a disappointment everywhere. But we had to obey. And this is why I'm giving this testimony. Jonah, we may not be able to go to chapter 2 to see what the, his prayer when he's, the, he's in the heart of the belly. But when we obeyed, that's when I'm looking back. Normally I look back. And I look at the beginning of the current trend of things. That's when God started moving in my life. In a very special way. Because the same time, the same season, God gave me a burden to pray for the city. And I was able to, to pray for the city, the driving around the city. I was able to pray for the city for seven years. And many of the issues that were going on in the city, they were all flattened. We may not be able to go into a lot of details in that. And following that, we were able to take a, a lorry from Isli all the way to Moyale, praying so, so that that road, that road can be tarmacked. Because we would go on top of lorries to, for missions, and it was very cumbersome, it was tiring, it was risky. So three of us took a mission, and it took three days on top of the lorry to get to Moyale. Three days coming back, like Jonah was in the in, in the in the in the in the in the, in the stomach of, of a fish. Three days, and you are on top of the lorry. You are sitting on those chumas on the lorry for that time, many hours. And you cannot look behind because there are trees that have overgrown the road and you must duck them all the time. That's how serious it was. But within a few years, a decision was made to have tarmac put on that road. And now as we talk, the, the journey that took us three, three days one way, it takes one day to come back, to, 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 to travel from Moyale to Nairobi, 10 hours. So. I'm saying there are many other things I can say that God has done in, within my life. But I discovered it is when I responded to what he told me that I'm rebellious. I thought I was obedient, but I was rebellious, and I was ready to leave an international meeting for the sake of obedience. So God started moving in my life. I, I want to encourage you, and I want to help you to see that this God, when you go off, and he has called you for a certain ministry or a certain project, he will not leave you alone. He will always go for you, get you. Sometimes it may not be very pleasing the way he is handling you. But, like in the case of Jonah, but he is going to help you to be on course. And unfortunately, many times we do not always respond quickly enough. And this is where the problem is. It takes long for us to respond. In the meantime, we delay the program of God. And that's where we are. Even in the land, some of the things that could be happening is because God is not so happy because our responses are not swift. 
We don't respond quickly. It's like we know. Oh, I know. I, I know. I know. But we are not moving. So God in this particular season wants to change us. Wants to, 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 transla to transform us. To make us a people that respond immediately. I will give you another testimony because of response. Because I know the time you take to respond to an issue is extremely important. I had a case. In this case, this particular lady had gone overseas to study. And they were able to finance her to study. When she got there, she was not able to study. She became uh, chaotic and rebellious and uh, stealing. Eventually, she was deported by the government of that nation. And when she came back here, she became so chaotic, stealing everybody, getting into a wrong marriage. She gets a child, the child dies. She gets another child, the child dies. And it was chaos everywhere. Eventually, we sat with her. It took two and a half hours to diagnose, to know where is the real problem. And when we discovered the problem, the problem is that uh, in ch at childhood, she had been hurt, she, was, she had been offended. And now it was manifesting in rebellion, in stealing, and there was death also manifesting in her life. So when she knew what she needed to do, first of all, to forgive people because of what they did to you, and then to deal with the healing because when you get shaken in life, you, it's like the doors of the temple. This is the temple of God. The doors of the temple fling open. If that is not tended, is, is not attended to, the doors remain open, then you get foreign, foreign visitation. That's where, you, that's where you see anger, bitterness, and hatred. And the wound, because there is a wound that goes with it, after you have forgiven people and the, the offense took long, that wound makes you a disabled person. Now, the remedy to that is for you to see yourself, to see that you are not the way you think you are. That anger, that bitterness, that hatred, they are not fruits of the, of the Holy Spirit. They are not parts of the fruit of the Spirit. Believe me, they are not. One time, a sister told me that when she gets angry, she falls down completely and with a force. Then I told her, when you fall in love with a force in that manner, it means you have lost control over yourself. Therefore, someone else is in control. Then falling with a force, it means there's a force on inside of you that brings you down in that manner, that you have lost control over yourself. Then I, I, I asked her, that force, is it from Jesus Christ? No, it can't be from Jesus Christ. It's a demon. Let's say it's from the devil. The devil in the temple of God, that's where the issue is. If you can't see that, in that anger of yours, that you are not in charge, someone else is in charge, and I will tell you, that is not the Holy Ghost. In that anger, and you are, you are doing things that are not so good, in that anger, and you want to say it's the Holy Ghost who is in charge, because you can lose control. That's what we are, so, we, are, we are talking about. So, that's what you need to confess. James 5.16. Confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. We are talking about the healing. So this sister, when she got to know that she had a problem and she knew the, the nature of the problem, we sat for two and a half hours, I said that. When she left that meeting, she went straight to address everybody that had caused her a problem and to, 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 to ask them to forgive her because of her bitterness and hatred and all those things that go with wounded people. So she took one day to clean up the whole lot. Those that were not in the city where she was, she took one week to cover them, going to and fro until all of them were covered. After that, she was back to school. She got out of that bad marriage. She was back to school. She started afresh with diploma, first degree, second degree, and now she is doing her, her PhD. That's how swiftness works. This is what I'm getting at, responding to issues immediately. But we are very slow people. Therefore, we delay healing. 
even concerning cor uh, coronavirus, let's continue listening to what God is saying. First of all, let's deal with the issue of fear. Because our God has not given us a spirit of fear. First of all, we deal with that. Then we focus on God. We keep approaching. We keep coming closer and closer to him. He will surely speak. I know he has spoken in diverse ways, but we want affirmation. We want to be able to say there is nothing else but this. But we know God is going to come forth for us. We want to uh, pray so that we can stop this meeting. Father, we want to thank you. You've been good to us. We thank you for your word, and we pray that you shall help us to respond to you when you call, to you when you speak to us, and we shall not be rebellious. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. So the church says, Amen. God bless you. We shall see you another time.